Alrighty, it is 5 p.m. So that means we are live for another episode of Southwest Florida Talk Radio, and we are going to be talking about the city of Fort Myers uh, mayoral race. But before we do that, we like to have a little fun. So I'm bringing in my best friend over here. This is Kelsey, the best bartender in Fort Myers, who is going to introduce the uh, not just Fort Myers, Southwest Florida. Excuse me. How how dare I undersell you like that? Um, feed him liquor every single Friday. That is not true. I say very nice. I give her compliments every single week. So she's going to do the drink of the week and tell us about uh, one of the awesome options you can get here down at Cantina 109 in the Gulf Coast Town Center in Fort Myers off of Lico Road and I-75. Kelsey, the floor is yours. Tell us about this very large margarita I'm about to drink. <laughs> yeah. So in my hand, I have a jumbo Coco Rita. So um, because they come in on Fridays, we always try to do a specialty drink for everyone. So if you come in tonight, this will be $15. Um, it is equivalent to two drinks. Um, it's infused with coconut flavored tequila, as well as blue carousel, pineapple juice, orange juice, and sour mix. We have coconut flakes that we put on top of it, and then there's a sugar rim. Okay, as I say every week, Cantina 109 is one of the best Mexican restaurants, if not restaurants, around the area, and they got Kelsey serving you, so make sure you come down. I'm going to attempt to drink this throughout the show. It should be interesting. I might be slurring a little bit towards the end, <laughs> but that's okay. We like to have fun. Kelsey, thank you very much for for always ensuring that we stay best friends. Alrighty, with that all being said, I am passing a mic to Ed. A oh, little, little, little wire tangles here. You got, you got a mic. All right, let's bring in the guest. Of, All right, everybody, welcome. Uh, we are at Cantina One Hundred Nine. Uh, yes, uh, we have a very special guest tonight. We were hoping for a debate, but uh, Kevin is here on his own. So, Brendan, why don't you introduce our guest? Yeah, uh, this is mayoral candidate for City of Fort Myers, Kevin Anderson, and I know everyone was. The big question on everyone's mind, especially if you're following my page on Facebook, is whether if Jacqueline McMillan, her, his opponent, would show up after I so graciously invited her for a live, unedited, unfiltered interview for her to share her platform. She obviously turned it down. So you know what's going to happen? We're going to give Ed, we're going to talk to Kevin longer. I'm sure he's got plenty to say. We're going to share his platform about what he, why he is running for the mayor of Fort Myers. So Kevin, first of all, uh, for people that don't know, uh, who are you and... Uh, you know, uh, how did you get to where you are right now before we talk about running for mayor? Well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Cantina 109 for uh, hosting y'all. Uh, and secondly, just a reminder to the folks, this is September 11th. It's the 19th anniversary of uh, one of the darkest days in our history, and we should never forget that. But in answer to your question, Ed, uh, you know, I came to Southwest Florida in the mid-70s. I went in the army right out of high school because I basically I had two choices when I graduated from high school. College wasn't an option. It was go to work or go in the military. And I chose to go in the military, did three years in the army as a military police officer, uh, spent two years in Panama. When I got honorably discharged, I um, got hired on with the Fort Myers Police Department. So from 79 to 2004, I was a police officer in Fort Myers. Uh, worked my way up to the number two position, uh, at which point I decided to retire and go to work for Chico's. Uh, spent about 15 years at Chico's. When Mike Flanders decided to retire from the council and I saw what was ha happening, the powers to be were handpicking their candidate. And in my mind, it was like, okay, another puppet. And I said to my wife, I can't sit back and just watch this happen. And we talked about it, and we knew it was a long shot. We knew I was going to have a battle, uh, but I worked it hard. There was five of us in the primary. I came in second place uh, behind the other candidate by 28 votes. Hmm. And then in the general election, I won it by 6%. Wow. Meaning the Fort Myers City Council. How, how, long, City Council, yes. how long have you been a council member? Since uh, November of 2018. So I'm going on just about two years now. Well, the same thing happened when Mayor Henderson decided he was going to run for Congress. And they did the same thing. They handpicked their candidate. And I thought, no, I can't sit back and let that happen. So I threw myself out there. And I knew I was risking it all because I was up for re-election mm. and I had to choose. Do I run for re-election or do I run for mayor? And if I didn't win, I'm out completely. But I, I committed to running. And not only was he the lead vote getter in the primary for the, the city of Fort Myers back in August, you annihilated the quote unquote hand picked candidate. Yes, uh, I think I had her about 
by 15%. You do not need to be humble on this show. Congratulations on the win. Um, and, uh, you know, there are, there are many people out there that are pegging you to be the next mayor of Fort Myers, but we can't ignore Jacqueline McMiller, your opponent. First of all, let me ask you the question that I asked her, which started my little, you know, back and forth with her. It's a very simple yes or no question. Do you condemn the violence that's happening across the nation in these protests? Absolutely. Look at that. How hard was that? Ed, I've been fishing for that answer all week from her, her opponent. He was able to say yes or no. But, but let me also say, you know, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, the right to, to protest. They are all in the First Amendment. And it's the First Amendment for a reason, because the founding fathers thought those things were very important. So I respect all the protesters right to protest peacefully. I respect them to have their opinions. I don't like what I hear, but I respect their right to say it regardless. And the whole point, sorry, I don't let you go, is the whole point of why I was asking that question is we just wanted the mayoral candidate to take a hard stance so that those peaceful protests, which have been happening here in Fort Myers and Southwest Florida, will continue to be that peaceful. Exactly. And, and you know, we're very fortunate that the protests that did occur in Fort Myers were were peaceful. And I, and I give credit to the protesters and also to the police department for coming together beforehand and letting each other know the expectations, uh, what was expected for a peaceful protest and what would and wouldn't be tolerated. You said you spent two years in Panama. That must have been when Noriega was still uh, run, um, running that country. No, was it was that... actually before wow. Noriego. Was, yeah. um, so you're in your 30s then, huh? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my, my question is, my 30 times too. <laughs> you, you, you spent time in the military and you, you spoke about today being September 11th. What do you think about what you see the military now going through? It's like a push-pull kind of thing nationally, and they're, they're really getting shit on, uh, and nobody knows what to believe. What, do you, what is your opinion on what's going on with all that? You know, every morning... I, I start the day off with prayer, and I include our military along with our first responders. They all have a tough job. Um, you know, when I enlisted, I enlisted during peacetime, but I was well aware of the fact that that could change in a heartbeat. One incident somewhere could have turned us into a conflict somewhere. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, we were negotiating the return of the Panama Canal back then. Okay. And that, you know, if it didn't go the way the Panamanians wanted it to go, that that could have been an issue. And we would, those of us stationed there would have been right in the middle of it. So we're very fortunate that we have men and women who are so willing to commit to serving, whether it's for four years or 20 years. And they commit to being a soldier or an airman or mm -hmm. a sailor, whatever it is, knowing that they may have to follow orders that they don't necessarily agree with, right? but they do it because that's part of the job. And they do it knowing that a lot of times they're not going to get the respect. And sadly, what's worse than not getting the respect is sadly not getting the support. We put these young men and women into dangerous situations. And then when they do what they're trained to do, we want to question what they did right 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 and in some cases actually try them right for what we sent right. them they were do. trained to kill things and kill people and break things and yes but but you, to back to the question it's being politicized the military is totally being politicized in this race and it how do they be. feel about that and how i mean uh does it make people not want to sign up and and volunteer you know i think again we're fortunate that there's enough young people who are they love this country and regardless of what's going on, they're going to serve. And you brought up how we don't give, give the support to veterans. We have an issue, a little mini epidemic that people don't realize here in Lee County. It's homeless veterans. Yes. Um, and I'm sure in Fort Myers has the same issue. What is something, if you're elected, that any initiatives or any, any plans that you have to help solve that crisis? Before I answer that, let me say, if I could do one thing, go to Congress and do just one thing. It would match the veterans' pay and benefits with those of the Congress people. It's ridiculous how much some of them get paid. And, and you know we can't afford to bring the military up to Congress 
and we're not going to bring Congress down to the military, but you can somewhere in the middle. And I think we could do a whole hour on that uh, yes, conversation. Yes. Yes. Uh, just for a perspective, so, I'm pretty sure that the U.S. House Congress seat that Byron Donalds and Cindy Benye are running for, they get paid about 175000 Well, they need a raise. I, right. And I don't know what, uh, uh, I know I was like three or $4,000 a year when I was in. Nice. So oh, well, that's, that was that's far too much. Yeah, far yeah. too much. All right, yeah. So back so, to the homeless veteran question. Uh, we, we have a problem with homelessness. There's no doubt about it. COVID-19 has really brought that to the forefront. And what it comes down to is there's, a, there's just a, a lack of services, whether it be medical, mental health, job training, um, financial uh, counseling, whatever it is, we lack that. And subsequently, we have a, a ton of people, unfortunately, who are living on the street, some of them by choice. How many? There's a ton. Um, oh, we're, we're talking about 3,000 in this area. In Fort Myers? In, in the Lee general, County. yeah, Fort Myers oh. area, not just the city. Do itself. you know how many are on the beach by chance? No. Okay. No, so 3,000 people are without a home. Which is in, in an area that is one of the best places, of most affordable places to live in the country. Could you imagine what's going on in New York City, L.A.? Oh. Yeah, but is it is it affordable for homeless people? I mean, when when they are homeless, oh, you don't have any money. I'm saying that the fact that they that we even have 3,000 3, homeless seems, people yeah, in Lee that's County. That's definitely a lot. Well, well ironically, my, my wife and I, during COVID, we would go downtown to the library to Lions Park, to Centennial Park, and we would pass out snacks, figuring, hey, look, it wasn't much, but we were giving them something to put mm -hmm. in their stomach when they needed it. And we talked to a lot of people, and we actually talked to a gentleman who was in a wheelchair who received two different benefit checks a month, totaling $2,300. Wow. And he chose to live on the street. So some of it's by choice. A lot of the veterans don't want to be confined. The, because of what they've been through, they don't want to be housed in with other people. Mm. They want the openness, the freeness. Uh, but back to the question, one of the things we're exploring, and I've, I brought this up at two recent council meetings, you know, first with the problem in Centennial Park, you know, we're, we're getting ready to sink about a million dollars in the refurbishing Centennial Park. And we can't do that and have it be a homeless encampment. Then the other issue I, I brought up was the impact it's having on restaurants in downtown. They're already struggling because of COVID, and now you add the homelessness uh, population in, that's uh, grown in downtown, and they're losing business. And we can't afford for downtown to go backwards. We have invested too much in downtown over the years. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we're exploring, and it's uh, it's happening, I believe, in, in Pinellas County, is a homeless campus where you actually allow them, you get them an area, you allow them to, to put up tents, or makeshift shelters, you bring in the services, you bring in mental health services, you, you bring in people who uh, will donate food, uh, medical services, job training, mm -hmm. coaching, uh, financial coaching, anything to help them. And then you work toward transitional housing, getting those you can into a transitional housing, and then from there, you try to transition them out of there. Yeah, but why would home. why would somebody that's in a camp like that, when you're providing them all the services you can, why would they? Why would anybody? I'm not saying nobody would, but right. it sounds like you're setting them up nicely. There's always that aspect of it, and then the other part of that is, when you do that, do you attract homeless Others. from other yeah. areas because you have the services? Is it working in Pinellas County? Uh, so far, it's it's a relative. How many here? Um, I'm not sure what the okay. numbers are up there. Uh, I think that's the point. You want to put the emphasis on the, you know, on the mental health training. Uh, For sure. Yes. Because that, that's you, you, you need those professionals to, you know, essentially convince them that this is not the way of life. Let's get you into a better situation with the transitional housing. And, and the bottom line is we cannot go on the way we're going on. Like I said, a uh, million dollars to renovate Centennial Park, uh, which includes new playground equipment yeah. for uh, special ability children nice so that all children have access well if it's a homeless camp you know a lot of parents aren't going to want to bring their children so it's it's a it's a far reaching problem there's no simple solution yeah. and we've got to start somewhere now that sounds like it'd be something that you might have to team up with the Lee County commissioners with cuz i don't think there's anywhere in the city of Fort Myers limits that you can have an area like this is is have you looked into a partnership with Lee County, or do you have we're, a spot in mind? No, we're, we're always in, in communications with Lee County because Lee County actually has more funding for homelessness 
than the city does. And it's not just a city problem. It's a county problem. It's a regional problem, actually. So we're always in contact with the county. The, the thing to consider is you don't want to put this camp out in the middle of nowhere. Because if it's in the middle of nowhere, they won't go. They won't want to be there. They still want to be able to have access to the Circle K or the 7-Eleven or whatever it is. So you can't just isolate them in, in a, a, a rural part of the county. Are we ready to move on to something else or you want to keep? No, no. Um, okay, so we... I really need to ask you about the mask mandate because we were talking about it before the show. And I know I'm obsessed by it and people that are, are tuning in from, uh, it's a hot from, subject. from my show or just they're flabbergasted by the amount of uh, Please talk about your favorite up. person on, on Fort Myers Beach. No, no, no. So uh, Lee County doesn't have one. Fort Myers doesn't have one. Did, doesn't have one. Uh, Cape Coral doesn't have one. Just and today the numbers came out. It's 60. They're down to 60 patients in Lee Health. And it's been going down uh, faster than it was going up. So that's great. That's 60 great people. news. 60 people. I haven't seen that post. 60 people, 60 people as far well, at the peak, it was over 300. Three, yeah, it was like 365 or something. Yeah, so and, and the last numbers I saw, the positivity rate in Lee County was lower than Collier County, which has yeah. a mask mandate. So the, the question is, uh, why why is, is a mask mandate work? That depends who you talk to. Uh, well, I'm asking There's, you. <laughs> I Well, let me, let me say this. On July 7th, we had a special council meeting to discuss this. It lasted several hours. Sure. And the vote came down 4-3 against a mask mandate. Which way did you vote? I voted against it. But I added to the... Uh, the process of saying, hey, let's work with the businesses. Let's encourage the businesses to require their their employees and their uh, their customers to wear a mask. So it would be like a, a de facto mandate, so to speak. Most businesses signed on to that. And no, we didn't have rights in stores because people didn't want to wear masks. You know, it's, it's no different. You want to come into a place, they require shirts, shoes, um, Something else. I, I actually yeah. agree with this completely. Yeah. And so you can you can require a mask. Uh, but I don't think it was up to us as government to force people to wear a mask. We are starting to see studies out there now where wearing the mask for extended periods of time is not good for a person. Uh, simple thing is uh, dental problems because it, it holds the bacteria in there. Well, what do you say to the people that say the reason the numbers are going down is because people are wearing masks? Is there any evidence that you've seen that that's the reason why? No. Okay. There, I mean, there are studies out there that will show that, but there are also studies out there that will show it doesn't. Well, I mean, even Dr. Fauci said in the beginning, it, it's yeah. social distancing is our, is our right. best weapon against this disease. Yeah. And, and to, you know, if you practice social distancing, you wash your hands frequently, you use hand sanitizer. If you're in close proximity, wear a mask. But if you have symptoms, stay home. Right, right, right. Get checked out. Quarantine yourself. Don't go to places where where there's large crowds. Now, do I, I don't mean to speak out of line here, but do people know that you you had it? Um, well, it was on the news. Okay, so how how did, how did you get through it, and how did you feel, and how you know how bad was it? You know, it's. <laughs> It was a funny thing. Uh, I came back from a cruise on the 20th. It what was the hell? Friday. You went on a cruise? Which Who month? does that anymore? March. March. <laughs> okay. So oh. you're still in that okay. gray area. Well, let, let, let me qualify this with my wife and I have been wanting to do a Panama Canal cruise. Haven't been in Panama. Very nice. For, for a long time. And we we're going to do it for our 30th anniversary. Unfortunately, this cruise schedule and my schedule at Chico's didn't line up and we couldn't do it. The following year, I was campaigning. The following year was my first year in office, and I didn't want to, you know, be away from from the job. So finally, at the end of last year, we said we've got to do this. We found one in March. We did it, and we and by now we're celebrating 33 years. So we we come back from the cruise on Tuesday afternoon. I happen to be talking on the phone with the city attorney, and he says, hey, "So how are your wife, you and your wife, feeling? Any symptoms?" And I said, "No, we're both doing fine. You know." We've quarantined ourselves, self-quarantine. As soon as I hung up the phone with him, I got a little cough. I mean, just a little, very, but by morning, it was more pronounced. Mm -hmm. I started getting a scratchy throat, you know, the chills, the aches and everything. But until the last two days, and I had it for about a total of 20 days or 12 days, I mean, it was just like having a bad flu. Yeah. You know, I never really got sick to my stomach, no breathing. 
and in the last two days that night I got had high fever. Wow. So I was a lucky. You're lucky. Man. You're still not out on that boat right now. Quarantine. <laughs> Some people we that were, were out we there were forever. Worried. We were worried about that. Yeah. You know, we we got to go to two ports, uh, Cozumel and uh, Georgetown. The next on Monday we pulled in to Cartagena, and they wouldn't let us off. Uh, and that was the end of that. You know, uh, do you still work with Chicos? No, I I left in June to focus on the city council job. I mean. Chico's, you might have gotten out of there at a good time. Chico's is a mess. And also, Hertz is a complete mess. And those yes. are two of our biggest employers here in Southwest Florida. Is there anything we can do to, I don't, I hate bailouts, but is there anything that the region can do to save them and save those jobs? Or do we look to better and bigger employers to take their place? Because there's a good chance in two years' time, both Hertz and Chico's will be shut down here in Southwest Florida. You know, I can't speak for Hertz. You know, I know they're struggling. Um, and it may be that the COVID was the icing on the cake. What I can say about Chico's, Chico's is a very strong company. Uh, when I was there. Really? They, oh, that's, I think that's the first time I've ever heard that. No, no. They're very strong. Uh, no debt. Um, I think there was probably close to $300 million. At one time, I know there was $300 million in cash. They were expanding in Europe, the, uh, the Middle East, Mexico. Canada, uh, we were struggling. I say we when I was there. You know, there were struggles with putting out the right product. Uh, they were overcoming that when COVID hit, and of course that's had an effect when you're not selling clothes. But their sales are, are coming back up. So, do you feel confident that Chico's is here to stay, or at least the near future? My prediction is yes, they will be here, but they'll be a, a much smaller company than they were. Are you happy with the police chief? Yes. Um, and, and you want to give a little perspective. Uh, right around probably the time you came into office in the council, Fort Myers Police Department was a mess. Yes. He, well, it was actually. Uh, was maybe a few years before that. Yeah. Yeah. Chief Dix has been there about four years now. I think he was hired in, in 16. And they brought him on to really turn right. that department around. You want to talk about the problems and how they've improved it and maybe how I'm giving you a million questions in one. I'll make sure you answer all of them. But maybe I'm also to remember mine too when he gets done with his nine. Ask answer his first, and we'll get into okay, mine. Give, give me your question. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Is police chief doing a good job? I uh, I believe he is. Uh, morale seems to be up now. Morale is a tough thing in police departments, right? Understand that because it's not you, you know you're dealing with the public, and a lot of times the public doesn't appreciate what you're doing. Then you have especially to, in 2020. Yes, you have national news that really hurts at times you have court rulings which don't make the job any easier and then you have internal politics so morale is a, t a tough thing one of the things we can measure is violent crime is down over 40 percent we're not having the murders and especially the unsolved murders like we were having before the chief got there and i think a lot of that is based on building back the confidence and trust of the community mm -hmm. that's a slow process Plus, he introduced some really great technology. We have a real-time crime center, cameras, facial recognition, um, the spot shotter. What's that? Or the shot spotter. <laughs> the shot spotter. Basically, uh, in areas where there's high incidence of gunfire, they have towers placed. And they triangulate it. It gets sent to a uh, center in California. And within now, this all happens within half a minute. It gets sent there, they process it, and they dispatch it right to the cars. So in the past, what would happen is we'd have to rely on a citizen to call in saying, hey, there's gunfire over in this neighborhood. Wow. Now they're being told, you know, right 30 seconds after it happens, and it's amazing how they get within, you know, like within a foot of where it says it happened, they could find cases. That's insane. It yeah. is. I actually haven't heard of that before. Oh, it's, it's a great, great technology. And they have made some really great arrests because so so the technology is the tower can hear the can hear the gunshots and differentiate a gunshot between, from a firecracker. Absolutely! Wow! And and the officers in the car and on their phones can hear the gunfire as well. It's crazy. Yes, they, and they have shown up at scenes and made drug arrests, warrant arrests, firearms arrests. Is there other technology that we don't know about that there? Are Big brother is watching I, over us. I can't tell you. <laughs> I am sure. If I tell you. <laughs> that is crazy. That's the first time I've ever. I'm sure it's all over the country. Uh, 
probably just in major cities because it's not yeah. it's not a cheap venture. Sure. But it was it was a very good investment here in Fort Myers and it's paying off. So do we have enough police officers on the on the force and do they get paid enough and uh, they uh, they feel like you uh, the council uh, appreciates them? Uh, I believe they feel like I appreciate them because they gave me their endorsement. OK. Nice. And, and I have spent two nights with them. Uh, New Year's Eve, as a matter of fact. I chose to spend my New Year's Eve till about three in the morning in a squad car with a police officer showing them support. I also went out March right after I got elected with the city manager. I think he thought we were just going to be out there till about 10 or 11. We were out until three in the morning. Nice. And it was good because he got to see parts of the city after dark and what the police officers have to deal with. So I think it was eye opening. The for city him. manager, yeah. So, um, you know, the police are in the negotiations right now uh, for their contract right. for, for wages. And we're going to throw more. We're not throwing less money. Defunding the police is not a thing happening here no. in Fort Myers, correct? No. And then just you were talking about how murders you said were down 40 percent since Diggs taken over uh, or around that general area. Regardless, it's down 40 percent recently. How does the improved training, the better leadership correlate well with this whole Black Lives Matter movement and these protests and everything? Uh, actually, that's a great question because prior to, and this was the end of February, beginning of the March, so prior to everything breaking loose across the country, Chief Diggs implemented what he called Campaign Zero. And he highlighted, I think it was eight policies based on police reform and barring the chokehold, uh, duty to intervene. So he was putting a policy out there for the officers having to intervene when another officer was out of control. Yeah. Unlike, you know, where you see in other uh, parts of the country where officers stood and watched. Yeah, that's the, just the Derek Chauvin on George Floyd's right. neck. Right. Regardless of how you feel about George Floyd and the situation he was in, the fact that he had his knee on a man's neck and for eight and a half minutes. Yeah, it's hard to justify that. So we're not going to see that here in Fort Myers. Uh, hopefully you will not see that in Fort Myers. I, I, More I wish I could say. That the probability of happening in Fort Myers is low. So we're seeing police reform already happening here before locally. It's being enforced. So is President Trump crazy in saying that police reform and you know Byron Donalds, who's a, the Republican candidate for, for our Congress. U.S. for Congress, he's saying the same thing. It's not the president's duty for police reform. It's your local officials. Absolutely, it's it's that's a local responsibility, and we have a chief who has taken that very seriously. The other thing he did is he hired an inspector general position never existed in the police department before this gentleman is has a law degree and he's prior fbi and he also did the similar job over in broward county so he's very knowledgeable uh, very experienced his job is to look at policy i'm sure he played a big role in um, those reforms happening he, he also oversees the internal affairs to make sure that when there are allegations of wrongdoing, it's being investigated and it's being handled properly. Um, best, I think one of the best things we ever approved was uh, that position. How many total officers are there in Fort Myers? Oh, they're growing, and I believe they're a little over 200 now. 200. We, uh, we just got a COPS grant for another 10, cool. and I think the chief would have to add another 30 or so to that. Wow. What's the population that... Uh, of Fort Myers that you're responsible for? Believe it or not, it's 92,600, I believe. 92,000. If you don't mind me asking, how much does a city manager get paid? He's, uh, I, I know it's probably over two, but I don't okay. know exactly. Okay. All right. That's a uh, that's an inside uh, question now, for me. Um, yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to see um, the police salaries yeah. get adjusted, that they're competitive. What's the total budget of the city of Fort Myers? Oh, the operating budget is 131. We just approved it. 131 million. million. What are you going to do to keep taxes down? You know what? We did a rollback this year. So we not only decreased the millage rate, but we rolled it back. So taxes are staying level. We didn't increase the solid waste fees, the fire assessment fees, the storm water, or the... Um, Solid waste, utilities, none of those fees. Were How are we able to do that with COVID and all that? Because we tighten our belt. And COVID forced us to tighten the belt. And keep in mind now, we got less revenues coming in. 
because businesses were shut down, but we still had less spending because a lot of the things not happening. We didn't have special events, things of that nature. Crime was down during COVID. So that was about a wash. This council, I have to say, is, is committed to not raising the taxes and to continue. This is the fifth year the military rate has dropped and we're committed to dropping it. Now, one of the ways that happens is our assessed property values in the city went up the highest in the county. Went up, I think it was 6.9%. Uh, 6 so we are now, our property in the city is valued at somewhere around $7.8 billion. And we anticipate uh, another $60 million worth of construction coming online. So even though you didn't raise the budget, the taxes somehow went up on the people because, or you rolled it back no, to we, even it out. Yeah, we okay. rolled it back to even okay. it out. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, before we get to the next subject, I know we got a couple ads we should probably read. Look at this, uh, time is flying by. Oh, man, we have so much fun on this show that uh, Ed is just running out of here. You going potty? Of course. Ed is going potty. All right, Kevin, so this is, uh, we got two great sponsors right now, our longest running one. Uh, let's bring up his logo here. You ever heard of uh, Legace Partners out in Cape Coral? It's, I'm sorry. You ever hear of Legace Partners, a real, uh, realty yes. group out in Cape yes. Coral? He's been our longest uh, running sponsor, and he's uh, signed up all the way through December. So we thank Legace Partners, who offers you a thorough knowledge of the Cape Coral Fort Myers real estate market and will ensure that you will buy or sell your piece of paradise at the best possible price. We have closed hundreds of properties, and our experience includes relocations and the investment purchases. Our goal is to provide you with a successful and stress-free home buying or selling experience. The majority of our business is repeat and referral, as we do our best to help our clients near or far with their Lee County real estate needs and give them the service they deserve. You can find them at Legace Partners on Facebook. Uh, that's Legace, L-A-G-A-C-E, Partners on Facebook. And our next great sponsor. Have you ever heard of Roland Martin Marina out in Clewiston? Absolutely. My, wife, my wife's family is from Clewiston. Oh, really? Yes. Been uh, out there plenty of times. Been Clu to Roland Martins. Clewiston is low-key one of my favorite places in Southwest Florida. I love going out there. They always welcome in me with open arms, especially at Roland Martin Marina, which uh, offers a great experience on the lake, whether it's a uh, I'm kind of reading, I'm like ad-libbing a, a, an ad here. Let me just read this, this ad right here. Are you ready for an adventure, a staycation? Head to Roland Mart Marina in Clewiston and enjoy world-class fishing, bass fishing with one of our fishing guides while you take in the beauty of Lake Okeechobee. You can take a break from fishing by trying some of our world-class food and drink at the Tiki Bar while enjoying a sunset on the lake. Roland Martin Marina in Clewiston. You can call them at 863-983-983. 3151 or visit them at rollandmartinmarina.com. Roland Martin is a famous fisherman and his son Scott Martin uh, is another very famous fisherman that is killing it on uh, on tour on in all the tournaments he goes to. Oh, he's, absolutely. He's a very big advocate for Lake Okeechobee and clean water quality, so I appreciate all their efforts uh, out there with that. A big thank you to our sponsors. Ed is done going potty so we can bring him back over here and get going with the show and move on to more subjects. Kevin Anderson with us. For everyone that is just tuning in, Jacqueline McMiller, Kevin Anderson's opponent, did not show up to our open invite. We were hoping to have a nice, friendly conversation. Uh, I think she's scared of me, so she didn't show up. But regardless, we have Kevin, and we're talking about a lot of great stuff. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us. He's not going to be in his 30s or 40s, whatever the hell he is all his life. And at some point, he's going to have to use the bathroom a little more than he does now. I, you know, and I've been, I've been, I've been slowly working on this margarita so that this didn't happen to me in the, in the. How many the calories is in that drink there, Brendan? No, I'm. A, I, yeah. this is I'm like have two to hit of the them. Gym soon. I, I went this morning. Might go again tonight. Hey, before, uh, before we go on, I, I just want to point something out for for those who are watching. They may see this old black mark on the side of my face. You know, I was thinking about asking so that they didn't think it was like food. But yeah. there you go. Explain yeah. what it is. I'm not drooling or anything like that. Uh, this this has really been a year for me. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I, I had COVID in the end of March and June. I had to have uh, my shoulder operated on. And then uh, this month I had two spots of uh, basal cell uh, uh, skin or, cancer. Yeah, skin cancer. Right. Right on the face, right here. Right there. And that's what you see is the stitches. So the reason I point that out is just as I did with COVID, I encourage people to take COVID seriously. And I encourage your viewers to also take the skin cancer seriously. Look at that. Kevin Anderson is a fighter right there. That That is like <laughs> he's he just went through war and he's still and he's leading in the polls and he's, he's 
running for the mayor of Fort Myers. It's good to get everything out of the way in one year, not stretch it out sure. over five years. If you're going to get, get COVID, and and is there yeah, anything else yeah, you want to get yeah, this yeah. year? Or just get it out of the yeah, way. Well, I got about three months, right? <laughs> Hopefully he can get a uh, win in, uh, what, we got November 3rd? Are you taking so we're sides already? 54, I, okay. You're not being neutral, are you? Uh, no, I mean, this is a nonpartisan race, don't so technically. Don't be angry because she I'm didn't not come angry. on your show. Okay? I'm not angry. you would still interview her if she came in. I would still interview her if she accepted it. I read an article that you guys bought a ballpark. <laughs> we bought what a, the hell is going on with the, the we, city of no, Palms Park? No, we, we bought a ballpark back. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Why, why would you do that? Uh, you know, we've got the Midtown project is going to sure. happen there. And, and that's a great, great project. That's going to be such a boom for the city. Uh, it's going to have uh, density, so some a couple mid-rises, uh, mixed-use housing, uh, bistros, bars, you know, little shops. Is that the old Red Sox stadium? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yes, it is. So, you know, years ago, we turned it over to the uh, college, yeah, right? To the, to the county. Lee County F took it over. S FSW was playing there, right? Yes. And, and what happened back, you know, when the bust happened, uh, it was a financial burden that the Red Sox had left. It was a financial burden on us. In fact, we may have turned it over to the county prior to the Red Sox moving. But regardless, it was a burden for the city. The county took it over. Now we took it back. So we didn't actually buy it back. Uh, we're fortunate that the county has actually agreed to pay for the demolition costs. It's my understanding that if we wanted to bring that stadium back up, it would cost about $15 million. To make it you make it a usable baseball yes. stadium. Yes. Gotcha. Which isn't really going to give you a whole lot of return in investment. No, no, it's not. So it's going to be demolished at some point, and that's going to be part of that midtown section. Um, so how does that work? Do you sell the property, or are you keeping the property, and you're going to take rents from the people that, uh, that br build there's, restaurants, or how does that work? There's several things that will happen. You know, some of the property is going to be sold. Um, some of it might be public-private uh, partnerships. Uh, we're, just, just I want to clarify to Terry's comment right here. They didn't buy it back. It was given. It was right. just, it was given like back a dollar, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, we, a dollar. Right. They, we they, didn't they, buy it back. they did not buy it back. Lee County gave it back to the city of yeah. Fort Myers, and Lee County is uh, covering the demolition, oh, as he just said. I just wanted to clarify on Terry's right. comment there. And I also want to make sure that the, the the viewers understand too that if we sell it or make money off that property, then we will reimburse the county for the cost of the demolition. So really, it's. Yeah. It, it's not Wash. a win for you at all. You might as well. Well, no, no, it is because it's allowing us to move forward and it just shows a good working partnership with the county. Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine having a government, a local government that works well with the county. Oh, let me tell you, I'm, Interesting. I'm excited about the opportunity. Yeah. I know the commissioners. I right. know the county administrator. Yeah. Um, and every single one of those commissioners, I'm pretty sure endorses you. I don't want to speak for everyone, but I've had a, a few of them tell me that they, they support your election process. I don't well, know if that's public, that. so uh, I, I might have just thrown a few people under the bus, but I did not say whose names. <laughs> but there you go. That out. Yeah, and I recognize that people in certain positions have to be careful. You, sure. You know, you, it's just the, the way. Because if you don't up. win, you still have to work with your opponent. Not right. that you're not going to win. I mean, I have no idea. But I'm a, to Brendan, you're going to well, win. I'm really excited having a. Not that we have a bad relationship with the county, but I look forward to having an even a more improved relationship with the county because that's very important. Something we need to talk about, um, which is a big issue that all our environmental groups like to ignore here, except for the Calusa Waterkeeper, is all this, you know, Fort Myers is just known for runoff into our water, our local waterways here. You got Billy's Creek is unswimmable. You have signs up that say, don't swim in this because it's essentially just poisonous water. Uh, and then we have, we've seen the pictures online with all the construction from, I believe it was the Lumineer Hotel of that uh, runoff. Or I don't, it's it was the two projects on West First Street. And, and if, if I can just say, we need to keep that in perspective. Okay, it was dirt. Yeah. Play. But either way, it's still going to have... Yeah, it's not good. Yeah. Because it blocks the sun, which then the plants down there yep. don't get what they need, which means the fish don't have things to feed off. But that clears up relatively quickly. Both those companies are... are they're, they're class companies. They're following the best practices. And unfortunately, a storm comes in, heavy rains, and wind, and... And happens. I'm not necessarily blaming yeah. them, of course. It, we're in Southwest Florida where we get hit with a hurricane every single day. But how, no matter what you could say here, the pictures are going on Facebook and people are freaking out about it. How do you address those concerns? And what are we doing to improve our w water quality here local? Well, you know, first of all, we, we hold those companies accountable. 
and the DEP will, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, will find them, have and will. Uh, but more importantly, is, is looking at Billy's Creek. We, uh, we've gotten some grant money from the state to remove remaining septic tanks in the city. We have some areas that were annexed years ago, and they're still on septic. So we've got money to, to correct that, and that's part of the problem. We are aggressively working on our uh, sewer lines to upgrade them. And we're probably between 60 and 70% through, but we still have a lot to go. We still have some clay pipes out there which are subject to leaking. So there, there's an effort. We're not taking that lightly. We are doing a, a aggressive preventive maintenance on the lift stations. Uh, people may not realize there's 209, I believe, lift stations across the city. They have to be maintained. Our teams do the best they can, but they're subject to anything, like anything else that's mechanical, they're subject to a failure. And when that happens, we just have to respond quickly and mitigate the problem as, as quickly as possible. We just had a workshop on, on Billy's Creek, by the way, uh, the other day, Tuesday. So if you're elected mayor, what is the first thing you want to change? First thing I'd like to do is not necessarily a change, but I'd like to, to do some real auditing, some independent outside auditing, so that we fully understand what condition the city is, is in. And I'm hoping that what happens is the audit says you're in good shape. They won't. Well, hey, that's just every pol yeah. political organization out but, there. But if it identifies problems, then hopefully, you know, we'll be able to address them you know, and correct if, them. And if, cut wasteful spending. Yes. If if I was a Fort Myers resident, I would say, what did he just say? He doesn't know what's going on with my money. I'd be a little worried about that. Yeah. Well, it's it's not a matter of not knowing. You know, when you have right now our budget for this year is $129 million. Yeah. And then you have utility budgets. There's, there's a lot of it's a very it's not simple addition and subtraction. You know, there's bonds. There's uh, you know, Lost my train of thought there. I'm like, I'm like the is, guy is, is there something specific that you're worried about that something's going on? N no, it's oh. not that I'm, I'm specifically worried about a certain item. But what I want to do is if I'm going to take the helm of the city as the mayor, I want to be able to say with all certainty to the public that we have checks and balances and we are watching every penny and every Fair dollar enough. and we're Fair making enough. sure we spend your money right and you never you just never know if there's an you know something in the government that's getting money that's just not efficient or even worth right. it anymore right uh you know a lot of some people will have an attitude of it if it ain't broke don't fix it well you can always fix i it. think we don't need to wait until things break yeah. let's be proactive and let's identify things that we can change would you grade uh mayor Her henderson for us would i grade him well, I, I didn't mean it like that. I mean, yeah. grade Mayor Henderson for us. His, yeah. His performance you, as the mayor. Okay. Let, let me say this before I answer that is being an elected official, a public servant, even an appointed public servant is a tough job because every decision you make, you've got somebody who's going to like it, somebody who maybe who doesn't care, and then someone who is against it. So it's a tough, tough job. Overall, I think Mayor Henderson has done a good job. Uh, I hope that when I take over that I won't find things that says otherwise. I don't anticipate that. But, you know, I, I'm a tough grader. So A I, being the best, F being the worst, yeah. he gets a what? I'd, I'd at least give him a B minus. Okay. And grade the council under his mayorship. Um, I, I would put him right there. Right B along minus. with the mayor. I, you know, you've got seven different opinions. You're representing multiple groups of people. Sure. Again, it, it's very difficult. Overall, though, I think the council and the mayor has done a good job. Like I said, the military rate has come down, you know, for five years. We have in September uh, this month, very shortly, the Luminary Hotel is going to open up. The Harborside has been totally redone as Calusa Sound. It looks fantastic. That's going to be a boom for downtown. Downtown, up until COVID, was thriving. Yeah. In fact, uh, I saw numbers that downtown or the city was supposed to increase with economic development by 46%, far above the rest of the county. 
now COVID has affected that, obviously. So the city's moving in the right direction. There's one thing I can say with confidence. Under the, this council and the mayor, I can say with confidence, Fort Myers is open for business. Nice. Like I said, $60 million worth of new construction. Let me, let me ask you, sorry, let me ask you kind of a selfish, selfish question. You say Fort downtown Fort Myers was booming and before COVID, and I don't think that has to do with season or anything like that. It's people go there, right? Because right. Of, why don't people go to the beach during the off season? What's the problem there? What's the disconnect? What, why, the beach is still a nice beach. Why don't they go? I don't know if it's the weather, the heat, or, or what it is. Are uh, you sure people think it's a nice beach? I, I I don't know that for sure. I'm just saying when the, when season hits on the beach, it's it's crazy yeah and then and then it's like uh ghost town coming well, there's people still living in lee county and cape coral and fort myers why don't they go come in, let me let me let me wait well you're not running hold for on. anything hold on let me let me give you some perspective on that though the locals here that live here in lee county my age you know the people that really go out to these bars at night and stuff don't view favorably upon fort myers beach why is that they just think it's gross that's what they think and that's why people wanted margaritaville yeah so yeah. There is a, I think that could answer, I, he might disagree, but I'm just kind of telling you from You're my saying it needs a facelift. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think beaches, beach areas tend to be older. To, yeah. Uh, they, you yeah. know, they're, they're weather worn. I mean, we stayed at Diamond Head a couple of years ago and it wasn't that old. And it was like, wow, this is then not the greatest shape, hmm. but it's because it's on the water. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know. I, I would agree with Brandon. That's, okay. Uh, now, you know, Fort Myers, downtown Fort Myers slows down. Yeah. It slows down during the off season. Okay. But that's also the opportunity for the locals right. to go to their favorite right. restaurants downtown and not have to compete with the, the snowbirds sure. and the visitors. A story that isn't talked about enough, which I can't even remember the details about it, but I know it's been talked about before, is we're having a new development right across the street from the Publix on McGregor, right? Yes. You want to talk about that and where we are in the process with that? Uh, they're moving right along. What are um, what are we expecting? That's a big empty lot right across the street from Publix, right just south of downtown. What is going there? That's City Walk, and it's uh, apartments. Uh, it's a class operation that's constructing them. Uh, you know, I drive by it every day multiple times, and you could see it's you know cement block. It's not stick, which is good. Um, so there's going to be. We, I think a little over 300 apartments there and some retail. And then in, in between those apartments is a parking garage as well. So that's just going to even more. That's just more reason to come downtown, more people downtown. <laughs> sure. That, well, that's going to be good. That's going to be <laughs> friend. walkability. Terry, that Terry's comment is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be walkability um, to downtown and midtown or bicycle to those places. Uh, you know, when Midtown takes off, we're going to have some public transportation to, to minimize the vehicular traffic. So, and then across the street from them on West First Street on the river is a similar type project. Can I uh, ask you for a favor when you're elected? Yes. Can you make sure that trolley goes year round? Me and my friends would love to wear it, ride that trolley year round downtown. It's so great. You can't we, afford a car. Yeah, That's I a know. It's a, you know, it's a no. safe, it's a safe mode of traffic transportation and it's free. Well, we and we've discussed that, and and that's partially funded uh, by DOT, and I think a little bit by the county. But uh, I believe a, a, a majority of it is actually funded by the Community Redevelopment Agency to help bring people downtown. Uh, I know it encourages me to yeah, go out and have the, some drinks because it's of, free course, and reliable transportation. It, it's like any business; the demand has to be there, and if the demand's not there, it makes right. it hard to run the business. Right. I'll go out every single weekend. <laughs> so tell the listeners and viewers uh, why they should vote for you and why you're going to be better than uh, Jacqueline McMiller. Jacqueline. I think I'm the best candidate, number one, because I have a, uh, the experience. I had 20-some years on the police department, and some of that was in administration. I spent 15 years in management at Chico's. Uh, I know this city. I have been involved in this city. Even after I retired from the police department, I was actively involved in the city on different boards and in a charitable giving capacity with Chico's charitable giving dollars. Uh, I love this city. There, I mean, I, I lived in Cape Coral, and as I started moving up in the ranks of the police department, we moved over to Fort Myers because we felt that's where we needed to be to show support for the city and say, hey, if I'm going to be in a position 
where I'm spending tax dollars and providing this level of services, then I should be spending my tax dollars and my family should be affected by the level of service, whether it was good or bad. So I've, I've got the experience, I got the dedication, the commitment, and I think I have, I have the networking with other elected officials. I mean, Dane Eagle, um, and I've been in, already have talked, you know, he was appointed as director of uh, economic opportunity for the state of Florida. Uh, we've already had a brief conversation about him getting that job. I feel like with Dane's roots in Southwest Florida, that that connection will be very vital to economic development in the city, which is one of my key points. Uh, public safety. I believe our public safety officers should be competent or, or competitively compensated. And competent, too. Yeah, competent. Well-trained, <laughs> well-trained, well-equipped, but more importantly, accountable for their, their performance and their behavior. And I think we're moving in that direction, as we talked about a couple minutes ago. Our taxes. We have to be good stewards of our tax dollars. And I think we're showing that with the reduction in the military. And I'm one who thinks we take that budget. And if you've ever been to a place like Pantanella Grill, where they shave the lamb, very thin strips, nicely done. All of a sudden, you have a big pile. Well, we can do the same thing with the budget. Don't take an ax to the budget. Take a scalpel. Trim that fat. We did it at Chico's. Before you know, you got a pile of savings right there. The next thing is our neighborhoods. The disparity between the property values and the tax bases in our neighborhoods are unbelievable. And I can run it down real quick. These are last years. They've changed, and I don't have those memorized yet, but they, they have changed. Ward 1, 2%. Ward 2, 10%. Ward 3, 9%. Ward 4, 15%. Ward 6, 16%. Ward six or Ward five, sixteen percent. Ward six, forty-eight percent. They contribute eighty-four percent of the tax. For revenues. people that don't know, where basically is that? Okay, Ward six, Wards one, two, and three are in Dunbar on the east side of the town. Four is basically downtown. Five's just to the south of that, and then six is the new development. You know, um, Colonial, uh, Six Mile Cypress, uh, Heritage Palms, uh, Paseo, all those places. Gotcha. Okay, well, that answers. Oh, well, how can, economic development. Right. That is crucial. Yeah. 90% of the businesses in Fort Myers have 10 or less employees. And 87% yeah, wow. of those employees live elsewhere. And that's something we need to change. So, is there a campaign website that people can go and give you some money? And uh, we gotta, we're going we're to audit your campaign, by the way, just to make sure you're not pocketing that money. And <laughs> Let me tell you, after. 20 some years in law enforcement, I have an aversion to going to jail. Did you ever meet a police officer that was corrupt and you had to say, listen, buddy, get your hand out of the cookie jar? Corrupt? No. Those who maybe didn't act properly? Yes. Same thing, but I hear what you're well, saying. Well, corruption is a <laughs> higher level. Corruption is usually involves criminal. Take a little money from a drug yeah, dealer or yeah. something like yeah, that or that whack involves criminal behavior. Gotcha. Uh, you know, Did uh, you have a little talk to him and say, listen, this isn't, this isn't the way to go? I had a very pointed talk with an officer one time. No kidding. Where he, he, well, let me back up because I can't say he did it. We were, we had a guy in the cell. He was drunk, out of control. We decided we we're going to handcuff him and leg shackle him. Yeah. I had the leg shackles. So he's got him up against the wall. He gets the handcuffs on. As soon as I get the second shackle on, thud. And the guy drops to the floor. I don't, I didn't see what happened. I can only speculate what happened. I pulled the guy aside and I told him. If this guy files a complaint, don't expect me to jeopardize my career for your foolishness. Mm -hmm. Need a lot more of that. Well, seems. And I, I try to tell officers, if somebody's willing to commit wrongdoing in your presence, what are they saying about your integrity? Mm -hmm. They're saying, hey, your integrity doesn't exist because I can do this and get away with it. Right. So I, I told the guy, he says, if he files a complaint, I'm telling him everything I know. I'm not lying for you. And then I went on further to tell him, you ever do this again, you can count on me filing a complaint. Wow. Because I don't appreciate being put in this position. Glad I asked that question. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's hard enough as it is. You know, you get in a fight with somebody, you got adrenaline going. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you're, you're excited. Uh, you're emotional. You don't need someone to intentionally cross the line. It's too easy to cross that line unintentionally. Right. right. We don't need people doing it intentionally. 
All right, everybody, don't forget to go vote on November 11th. And, third, uh, the third, website. Third, third, November 3rd. <laughs> no, November 3rd. The website. The website. www.kevinanderson4formayor.com. Awesome, Kevin. Thanks so much for coming on, and we appreciate your time, and good luck. It well, seems like you're going to. Uh, well, thank you. I thought I had an hour. Well, the hour is up. The hour is up. So thank now you. Now we got to so do much. final thoughts and get out of here. Kevin, All right. All right. thank you very much. Good appreciate luck. going to hang out after the show for a couple minutes. And All right. Well, that was. Uh, let's see. Let me get that microphone down there. You got you on. You on. You on. Yeah. No, you're off. You're off. So now am I on? Here uh, I am. He's gonna take his little uh, girly drink there. The big green so uh, umbrella. Good. Where's your umbrella? It's so good. What is in that drink, by the way? Uh, coconut tequila. Coconut infused tequila. Excuse okay, me. I need to gotcha. use the fancy word. So did I hear you say you're going to New York City to get into another? protest or something is that what your plan is one of the cities uh i think i'm gonna leave it as a surprise just for my own oh, safety well, i can't um, wait i I'm have on the edge of my seat <laughs> i have a meeting on monday to see if i can lock down the financials to get this happening and then i'll be on a, the first flight out uh one of the cities that's been impacted the most by the, the riots um I, not, you can go you go to portland i heard it's like 109 days now i was listening to the radio on the way over or maybe it was a podcast i can't remember and they said that they told the police officers in Portland that they can't use um, pepper spray anymore. It's it's silly what's going on in these cities. across. And you know what? I've talked to the officers in Washington, D.C. and in Kenosha. They are literally being told to stand down. You have people inciting riots when the sun goes down. And normally that's an arrestable offense, but they're not doing it because they don't have the resources to take on the entire it's crowd. Uh, and if, you don't, they, if they attack back, you don't see any of this on the news at all. Nope. Because they're, the reporters go away once the sun goes down because probably they yeah. fear, for, fear for their safety. But right. Uh, so your friend Brooke here kind of monopolized the, all the comments. I mean, she she's commenting like she's the whole page. What who's Brooke? I mean, what's uh, going on? Brooke there? is another really good realtor in, in Cape ah, Coral that people should look just into. Sell her a sponsorship. Yeah, Maybe I, we'll, know, she doesn't have to comment. We yeah. could just throw her comments across in a no. ticker. Uh, Brooke's been one of my uh, biggest fans and oh. believers since day one, so I appreciate gotcha. it. Gotcha, yeah. Thank you, Brooke, for watching and for commenting so much. So, but, Yeah, so it won't be just... So what we're doing, I'm talking to sponsors. They're going to send me on this first trip, and then when it goes you know, the way I think it's going to go and it gets the attention that I think it's going to get, then they're going to say, okay, the following week, here you go, here's more money. But they're go just going to keep sending you some. Yep. So for, and uh, what do the sponsors get out of that? Do you say they're advertising names on the something? Show or, yeah, like gonna, when you're out there, there'll, there'll be something they'll get in return. But I mean, at the end of the day, they just believe in real news and want to, America wow. to see what's really happening. And that's the biggest inspiration. Stop as to why they want I'm to just do goofing it. on you. Stop that. So the uh, they put you up in like the Four Seasons and get you a Mercedes. If, if, the... I, if I go to New York, I'll probably stay with my friends and make it cheaper on them. I try to make huh. it as cheap as possible. I really just want to get out there and document without going into debt. Gotcha. All right. Uh, I'm good to go. I uh, appreciate you having me on today. Oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kevin was great. Kevin was great. And the protest, you were, you were thinking there might be a protest out here today, but it didn't uh, happen. Someone, it, was, it was a rain. I had a couple of messages of people saying that they might have protested the show because they're mad at me for questioning Jacqueline, but it didn't happen. So explain to the people that might not know what you're talking about. Uh, what what did you do to her? What, did, what happened? <laughs> I didn't really do a whole lot to her. Jacqueline McMiller is Kevin Anderson's opponent. She is, and this is a nonpartisan race, and she's actively pushing very very socialistic ideas very far left ideas so people are not taking are taking they are taking note of that so when i came back from washington dc uh she pushed she's a big advocate of black lives matter organization so i shared her post and asked her the simple question do you condemn the violence that first question we asked covered yes or no mm -hmm. that's happening across the nation she refused to answer are you sure she heard you I mean, she had over 100 people of my followers commenting on each post. Hey, do you condemn the violence? Do you condemn oh. the violence? And each in every single one of those comments, one of her staffers replied some deflective answer. She refused to oh, answer it. Gotcha. That, no, I'm not I'm not against the black lives messaging. Black lives do matter. And I want For social sure. equality. The problem is we need to come out strong. If our next mayor needs to come out strong so that these protesters say, oh, you know what? This isn't a place we can get away with that here. Yeah. Antifa looks at it and says, we're not going there because we're going to get arrested they're not coming a little fort, fort myers are they it's you not never know if, if if a if a black man gets gets arrested and what they what the protesters think is you know pushing the limits and yeah. that video goes viral oh, it doesn't true. did you think Can't little think old kenosha that. thought that was going to happen Good there point yeah look at you you're on top of everything so what other cities are under siege right now that i'm not aware of portland's the biggest one um, Washington, D.C. has protests almost every single weekend. They got the Black Lives Matter. I mean, they literally have a 
a red carpet rolled out from by the mayor. Mm. So they, they encourage it there. It's, it's happening every weekend there. New York City is having smaller, but sometimes it gets out of hand demonstrations. I can't find enough time to mow the lawn. Uh, how are these people protesting every night? I mean, what's how do you That's fit a that very, into your schedule? Very good question, but I am almost, I, I mean, I don't have it confirmed, but I can tell you with 98% confidence that there is a group that is paid to do this by the Black Lives Matter organization. Mm -hmm. When I was there in Kenosha, there was this Black Lives Matter van, this white Mercedes van that was like protecting the protesters and following them around. I flew to the DC the next night. Guess where that van, very same van oh, and same people on. were. I That's swear so far to God, apart. swear to God. No, no, they Maybe drove multiple straight. vans. They, no, it's same van, same spray paint. They had graffiti on it, same people too. Mm, and when we were marching throughout DC, at one point, the protesters got lost. So I hear someone scream, is anyone here from DC? Not a single person raised their hand. 300 people in that crowd. Not a single person raised their hand. Ah, so they're, they're kind of like traveling protesters, yep, like the traveling Wilburys. That video that went viral with the guy saying we're going to burn the White House down. And I didn't see that. You saw it. Come on. We're going to burn the. No. He's was on, you, is on the YouTube. It was on Facebook and Twitter. It got 4.5 million views on Twitter on every Fox show, and you did not see it. You're the only attention. person. I don't have I don't have cable, but um, maybe, so how do I get that in my feed so I don't miss that next time? Do I have to? How I do I know, get Facebook that blue might check be mark? Censoring. You and by the way, you're a big deal. Why don't you get uh, check marked or or sponsored well, or hold on, Facebook, let me, Facebook's thing there? Let me finish that first point. Was when I got that video of the speaker at the Black Lives Matter rally in Washington D.C. saying he wants to burn the White House down. He before that said. There's a hundred of us from Portland here. They're literally oh. saying they're traveling. So where are they getting this money? Yeah. Black Lives yeah. Matter organization raises millions every year. I mean, don't let a good tragedy go to waste. That's the saying. And then uh, to your Is next. that on the van too? Was that on the van too? Don't no. Let a... no, no, okay. no, no, no. Uh, I forgot the... my next question already because you, you the... sometimes you go on a little long. I, and you I, know, I try to be point. thorough. Uh, so I tried to get verified. Oh, yeah, verified for the people for the plebes like myself. Uh, yeah, I had to explain verified, it to you, Dad. Verified on Facebook. Uh, what does that mean? So verified just basically means that blue check mark next to your name. What that does is it encourages new followers, and people will ah. have more trust in following your page, really. And it's saying that I'm the I'm a real deal and not just some Joe Smo. But uh, they didn't verify my account. They refused. They said that my account wasn't big enough, essentially. And then I went and found a CNN reporter. With 400 followers and verified with the blue check mark. How could people not think you're the real deal? I mean, come on. What, what's I mean, yeah, going on I'm there? saying all this humbly, Please. but I'm saying it's a CNN reporter with 400 followers and a conservative reporter yeah. with 13,000 13, followers. Hmm. How do you change that? How do you fix that? I mean, what's I the, have to what's wait 30 Facebook more days. Rules? 30 I, more days? In 30 days, I can reapply. They said, keep going. Oh, growing. you have to apply. Yep. Maybe, maybe I'll apply. You should. And if you, well, you're a conservative kind of well, guy I here. I don't say that. I mean, maybe it's because. I don't say that apply. like you See do. what happens. If I, well, you'll get mad. Then. I'll, I'll, I'll do it for you. I'll, I'll <laughs> How help do you, you walk do that? Through. I mean, is there a form you fill out? It's really quick and simple. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. You uh, just fill out a couple of things. Settings, you fill it yeah. out and no kidding. Well, I'm going to go home and do that. All right. So tomorrow on our show on the beach with the wife where things are a lot more calm. Um, uh, and I get to say a little bit more. Just kidding. Today was equal. I feel like I was equal today. I'm, I'm working when at the it. debates with the debates on It's It's impossible because it's like a show. Yeah. And uh, we have Jackie Lisek from the chamber on tomorrow and we have the owner of the sun deck on. We like to promote the business on the beach and, you know, we'll be wearing our mask and social distancing and all that because on the beach that's required because we're too stupid to know what to do. on. Can the we beach. please talk about it? No, no, Can no, we no. We have, talk we have about to save it for tomorrow. Now I got enough uh, shit for the picture <laughs> on, that I put up there. All right, Stop everybody. with the double standards, politicians. Stop yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. My sister's tell, telling me I am certified. Oh, wait a second. I don't think she means the same thing as you mean. Yeah. All right, everybody. We'll see you soon, and we'll see you tomorrow on Fort Myers Beach. Take care.